Hello everyone. Today we're going to explore the mangrove ecosystem. What we're going to do first, we're going to go through some basic information. Then we're going to go on a short field trip. And then at the end, we're going to do a quiz. So the first question you want to ask yourself, what are mangroves? Now mangroves are plants that are water loving and are called hydrophytes. And they're also salt tolerant and are called halophytes. Now, mangroves, they occupy specific regions or zones in the ecosystem. So what you'll find is the red mangrove closest to the water, followed by the black mangrove, then the white mangrove, and then the buttonwood mangrove. However, at specific zones, you may find a mixture of mangroves, but generally, they occupy specific zones or regions. Now, let's walk through the red mangrove. The red mangrove scientific name is Rhizophora mangal. The red mangrove, they have prop roots. I notice how they are coming from the bark or the branches coming down into the water. Also, what is important as well is that the red mangrove, they are perfect in terms of protection of juvenile organisms because juvenile organisms will find a safe haven in the root system of the red mangrove plants. Also, the red mangrove roots are very good in trapping debris and garbage coming from land into the sea, and so therefore they are good in filtering water from land going into the sea. The leaves are generally large, waxy, and thick. The flowers are yellow and white. You will find propagule on the plants of the red mangrove. And the propagule is a germinating fruit. So what is coming down, that long section, is the radical coming from the seed itself. And it's very advantageous in terms of stabilizing the seed or the germinating plant as soon as it falls from the tree. On the prop roots of the red mangrove, you'll find lenticels. And lenticels are like breeding holes. Um, to absorb oxygen. Now for the black mangrove, the scientific name is the Avicennia germinans, and this plant is the most salt tolerant. Also, this plant has pneumatophores, and pneumatophores are roots that stick out of the soil into the air, so they are aerial roots, and they're also called breathing roots. The leaves generally have salt crystals, especially certain time of the day when the water um, evaporates and leaves the salt behind. The flowers tend to have four white petals. The fruits are specifically shaped in a, I say, a torpedo shape. The bark is generally dark. For the white mangrove, the scientific name is the Lagunocolera racemosa. They also have pneumatophores, similar to the black mangrove. However, the white mangrove pneumatophores, they are knobby. And the white mangrove um, plants, they are the least salt tolerant. The leaves, they have pores, and they also have nectaries. And the nectaries are believed to secrete salt and sugar. The flowers, Shape like bell, similar to the fruits as well, have a bell shape. The pneumatophores are knobby um, and less pointy compared to the black. For the buttonwood mangrove, the scientific name is Conocarpus erectus. They have normal root systems and it is most landward mangrove plants. You find this plant on the land or further away from the water. The leaves are small and narrow. The, the flowers are always generally in a cluster. And the fruits, they look like small buttons. Again, the root system is a normal root system. Time for field trip. So I hope you enjoy the journey through the mangrove ecosystem as we explore by video. And we will be back for a quiz at the end. See you soon. Sometimes you just gotta believe
This is a very cool mangrove here, a red mangrove again. Um, this is the proper gule, so this is the fruit. The fruit start to germinate, and so you can see the radical coming out. So this will be um, good to stick into the ground. Notice it's very pointed as well, so it will start to grow, so it will be stabilized um, and prevent from washing away into the water or the ocean. And of course, you can see the leather relief as well. The prop roots, they are there. So this is a prop root right here. The red mangrove is a very unique mangrove to capture debris from washing from land into the ocean. If you look at the prop roots, they are actually netty. And so it's very difficult for debris to wash through them coming from land. So it's good for filtering water that is running off from the land into the ocean. And it's also good for protection for juvenile organisms. Because once they're in the root system, it's very difficult for the larger fish or predators to get to those juvenile organisms within the root system of the red mangrove. So it's a very special mangrove and the matter of fact is the first to be in the water. So starting from the shore onwards, you will see the red mangrove closest to the water. And then behind that, you'll see the black, then the white, then the buttonhood. So here is a black mangrove. You can notice the leaf. The leaf is really relatively pointed, relatively small. And notice the fruit. All right. Also, you should see crystals, um, salt crystals on the leaf. Um, at times, I will see if I see any. So for the black mangrove, I'm gonna, I'm going to zoom into a leaf, and you will notice you see the the salt crystals on the leaf. So notice those white spots. All right, those are the crystals on the leaf of the black mangrove. Notice again, the leaf is relatively pointed and relatively small as well. This mangrove is a white mangrove. You notice the roundness of the leaves, very round leaves. All right, and if you look closely, you will see some pores as well. Let's get into it. Um, so you notice the pores, those very small um, holes around the edge of the leaves. All right, so notice them. Those are the pores around the leaves. All right, I notice the shape of the leaf is really round, and so definitely that's a white mangrove leaf. So those are some very specific characteristics you can look for, observe the leaves, and you realize what type of mangrove they are. All right, so the white mangrove is really um, unique in terms of the leaf structure itself. They also have new metaphors as well, and at the base of the leaves you should see um, nectaries as well. So let's see if we could find a nectari on this leaf. Way to the base of the leaf, you should see it. So I'm going in on this one. Um, they will not be as large, but they tend to be those swollen areas. And notice if you look closely in, notice those dots there. Those are the nectaries. So they are the nectaries right there. You could see them. All right. Where you so notice you see those two little black dots. Right, so those are the salt, um, the sugar glands, or the nectaries. This is another white mangrove, and the bark, if you notice it, is relatively white bark as well. And you go all the way to the new mother forest. Notice they're a little bit different from the others. They are not so pointed at the top. Um, well, these are a little bit pointed, but well, but generally. Um, they are not pointed at the top compared to the black mangrove. So notice this uh, is not so pointed, relatively round at the top or knobby. All right, so that's a white mangrove new metaphor. Like some part of the mangrove ecosystem, you may see a combination of different mangroves together. So you might see the black mixed with the white and even the red at times. You know, so right here you can see a mixture of different uh, mangroves. So you can see a red right there. And then you're going to see a 
black mangrove right there all right and of course you look into it you'll see some new mother fours coming through those pockets of rocks and that right there is a white mangrove new mother four simply because you can see that the knobby top of it the very spiky ones those are the black mangrove new mother fours and right here we have some black mangrove new mother fours as these definitely can see how um, spiky they are or pointed at the top really cool root system they are for breathing purpose because of the anoxic soil they will absorb oxygen for direct respiration in the plant now remember the word anoxic means low in oxygen so therefore the root system will definitely have to absorb oxygen from the atmosphere so they work like snorkels if you think about it you know so they're like snorkels pushing out of the ground so the plants could breathe in these harsh conditions of low oxygen buttonwood mangrove um, you can see the small knobs or buttons on the plant this will have regular root system and this plant is further away from the water pretty much on land and let's look at the flower let's zoom into some flower I notice how they are round small flower that are present on this plant all right so it's a very unique mangrove as well again normal root system and it's further away from the water or the one closest to land plant of a well let's say a relatively big plant of a bunhood all right so notice again it's in the soil not so wet area all right and again you can see the buttons all right on the tree all right so those are the fruits and this is a very huge one um for the bunhood very huge one all right and so i'm going all the way down so sometimes the leaves of these can be really green or they can be silvery all right let us go into the leaf you're going to see the silver slight silvery color on these leaves all right so notice they can be really silvery all right now the importance of mangroves mangroves are good to stabilize the coastlines they provide habitat for many organisms. They also provide breeding grounds for a lot of marine, or marine organisms and also terrestrial organisms as well, such as birds. Serve as a nursery for many organisms. Also filter water by chopping garbage and debris. Mangroves also provide food, especially in leaves, fall from the tree and decay and form detritus that is being eaten by crabs or detritivores. Mangroves reduce flooding. They are good in cycling gases. As any plant do, they will take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. They also cycle nutrients. And because of all of this, they enhance biodiversity. Threats to the mangrove ecosystem. A threat include coastal development, climate change, habitat destruction, invasive species, pollution, natural disasters, charcoal mining, oil spills, and excessive hunting or overfishing may reduce biodiversity. Time for Quiz. First, identify this mangrove. So you're going to pause the video at this time and give your answer. Yes, this is a red mangrove. What is the meaning of anoxic? Anoxic means low in oxygen. Which mangrove is the most soil tolerant? And this is definitely the black mangrove. Identify this mangrove plant, look carefully at those small round fruits, and so this is buttonwood mangrove. What are these roots called? And absolutely, they are called pneumatophores or breathing roots. Name the structure shown on this plant, 
And this is called, they are called um, propagule. Which mangrove has this type of leaf? Notice the small dots or pores around the edges. And this is the white mangrove plant. What are these roots called? And notice how knitted they are. And they are called prop roots from the red mangrove plant. What is the scientific name for this mangrove? Again, look at the small round fruits. And so it is, the scientific name is the Conocarpus erectus. To which genus does this mangrove belong? And look carefully at the flower. Notice it's yellow and white. And notice those large, thick leaves. And so the genus is the Rhizophora. Mangal is the species. How mangroves help filter runoff water? And mangroves do this by trapping sediments, garbage, or debris. Now, I thank you for watching this lesson, and I truly appreciate you. And please remember to help protect the environment.